All right. Pre-trib rapture moment number 12. What about a split rapture? It's another thing that was taught by a lot of the old uh, old time Pentecostal holiness type people. They taught that uh, there would be a split rapture, that part of the body of Christ would go up if you were doing good, doing right. Uh, you'd go up if you were carnal, like going to a movie theater, or maybe if you're a woman and you had makeup on or something, you'd stay here. Let me show you why that doesn't work. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13 says, It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So what is the denial there in verse 12? The denial there is that when he also denies you, that means denies you millennial reign. How do you know that? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. So if you don't suffer for Jesus Christ, if you are a carnal Christian, a real one, okay, I think a lot of lost people try to fall under the bracket of carnal Christian and it don't work. But if you're really truly saved and you got away from the Lord, you stopped reading your King James Bible, you're starting to listen to the world's music, you're starting to watch the world's movies, you get messed up and the rapture happens, you know, you're not going to reign with Jesus Christ when he comes back. When he, you know, you as the sheep, when you go in and you come back out again at the second coming to find pasture, you know, I don't know what your job's going to be. Maybe you'll be up, stuck up in heaven or something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a guy, Joey Faust, that teaches that you're going to go to hell for the thousand-year millennial kingdom. I think that's nonsense. Okay, I don't believe in purgatory. Even if it is by the Baptists. You know, sorry, I don't believe in that. But, uh... Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 16 says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Titus chapter 1 verse 16 says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Okay? Now, the true church of Jesus Christ is made up of one body of saved people. Okay? And they, that one body of truly saved Christians, that one body is going to be revealed at the rapture. Right now, I can say, well, I believe that person saved definitely, this person saved, I mean, I can see a changed life and whatever else, but there are some people, I just scratch my head and I say, I have no idea if that person saved or not. I don't know. How, when are we going to find out? At the rapture. You say, well, then you're saying carnal Christians are going to be left behind. No, I'm going to say that lost, professing Christians are going to be left behind. All right. See, the characteristics there of the Laodicean type of believer in Revelation chapter 3 Verses 14 through 16, and the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. So even though it was a local church back then, as they say, a church that was written to by John in, a, in the area there of Laodicea, even though that's the true case, we can still use it as instruction in righteousness. And the instruction in righteousness is there, if God is spewing something out of his mouth, it's no longer part of his body. You say, well, then you believe that you can lose your salvation. I didn't say that. If I was to vomit something right now, I'm not going to be vomiting up my arm and my leg and my foot. I'm going to be vomiting up food, foreign matter, that's in my stomach. See? Now, there's a lot of people who are foreign matter in the body of Christ. They know the right things to say. They know the right words. They know the right everything. But they're false converts. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Those people are the ones that are going to be vomited out. They talk a good talk. They can talk all about Jesus. They can talk about the love of God and everything else. But they're not saved. They are not truly converted. They are still in their old man, their old sinful nature. They have not been regenerated. They have not been redeemed. They have not been purchased. See, anybody can come to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. There's nobody that he's going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you can't be saved. You're not one of my elect or something like this. No, that's Calvinism and it's ridiculous. But you have to realize God looks at the heart. 
and you get somebody that comes in their own self-righteousness and in their pride and they just repeat some little prayer because they think that that gets them into heaven and they can go on living in sin and not have a changed life, that person's not saved. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Good works come after salvation. Works meet for repentance. That's what the Bible teaches. It's right there. So you see, these people at the rapture, you say, will there be a split rapture? Absolutely. Not strong Christians and carnal Christians. Uh-uh. It's going to be saved Christians and false professors. People that profess that they know God, but they denied Him in their works. That's the split rapture. So, yeah, I do believe there will be a split rapture. The saved are going to go up. The lost are going to stay down. And it's at that point in time that we're going to see who was really saved and who was really lost. And I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to get left behind and they're going to be very, very shocked because they thought themselves to be saved. Let me tell you something, a little secret here. I was raised in an independent Bible church and I thought I was saved when I was eight years old. And I even put it originally in my testimony that I was saved when I was eight. But after studying the Word of God and after seeing you know, the marks of somebody that's really truly filled with the Holy Spirit, and I don't mean speaking in unknown tongues, I mean somebody who has God on them will have their family against them, they won't get along with the world, they have a changed life, you know, there are marks of a true convert. Their works will line up with what goes on here in the Bible. They will look like a real Christian, okay, according to Scripture. I didn't say they had to dress a peculiar way or drive a black vehicle or something like that. I said their works will line up with those people in the Bible. They will have the marks of a Christian, a true convert. And I don't believe, after looking at the thing, I don't believe I was truly converted until I was about 25 years old. It was then that I became, became very afraid and I realized my life does not line up with the people in this book. So you say, when were you really saved? I believe when I was 25. But if I would have continued in that church that I was going to as a young man, if I would have continued in that belief system, I would have gone to hell. I prayed a prayer and I thought that was all there was to it. No, there was a lot more to it than that. God had to purchase me. Okay? The Lord had to see that I was to a point where I was broken and my self-righteousness was no more. Then He purchased me. And now I can say, without any doubt in my mind, I can say, I'm saved. Because I'm no longer trusting in what I've done. I'm no longer trusting in my own righteousness and in my own things that I've done. I'm trusting in Jesus Christ and what He did for me. I'm trusting in that. And I am willing to live according to this book. I'm not going to say in my pride, oh, I don't live by the Bible. The Bible's a good book, but there's a lot of, of contradictions and whatever. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm going to show my salvation by living according to this book. Okay, the Bible says that you're to examine yourself whether you be in the faith. You better examine yourself. You better not count on just some prayer that you prayed a long time ago and there's not been a change in your life. You better be careful. You better look back to a time and say, yeah, that's when things changed for me. You better be careful because there will be a split rapture someday the saved are going up, the lost are staying. Make sure that you're going up. Mm -hmm.